In the southwest of England, there is a strange piece of land, a haunted and haunting land, inspirational to artists, artisans, writers, poets, filmmakers and musicians, a place full of strange archaeology, full of mythology and folklore, and full of fairy. This place is called Dartmoor. There are pixies here, there always have been. The pixie, even today, is an integral part of Dartmoor life. Nobody knows why, or where these little people came from, or when. Maybe it's an inherited memory of the prehistoric people that lived on the moors and left so many stone circles, hut circles, stone rows. Whatever the reason, Dartmoor has its pixies, and many tales of sightings of these strange small creatures. It is said that they are playful beings, and yet will not stand for human interference or curiosity. People who have seen the pixies, and there are many even today, describe them as no higher than three foot tall, sometimes naked and dirty, sometimes clothed in rags, sometimes even dressed in fine clothes of pretty colours. I guess the pixies appear to people how the viewers would find them most acceptable. My husband has seen them as small, hairy, wizened, nut brown. He thinks possibly naked, quick and wild, feral little things. These Dartmoor fey folk can make themselves invisible at will blending into the wilderness of the moor, only seen by a chance view of the human eye. There is a stable where we used to go riding on the moor, and the owner of that stable would quite casually say if a horse or pony shied away from tussocks or rocks that the horse must have seen one of the pixies hiding there. And this was done with no tongue in cheek or wink of the eye, but just matter of fact. Dartmoor is like that when it comes to pixies. The Dartmoor pixie lives beneath the ground, in the hollow hills. Strange music can sometimes be heard coming from these places, but don't stay too long to listen. There is a tradition that to leave a gift, maybe a pin, some ribbon or pretty cloth, at one of these fairy places would bring the good fortune of the pixies of the moor. However, get too close to where they were themselves and the intruder will be placed on under a pixie spell, mazed as the locals call it on the moor. We call it being pixie led. This does seem to happen a lot on Dartmoor. The Dartmoor pixies are also known to play pranks on walkers leading them astray in the dark, into the marshes, into the dangerous bogs and mires and swamps that suck the boots deep into the earth. Dartmoor can be a treacherous place. The pixies would light their lamps in the dark, flittering here and there, encouraging the traveller closer and then moving, changing the path, confusing the follower, leading them deeper into the bogs, or worse, into one of the many deep mine shafts. Nowadays, people say these lights are merely marsh gases burning, but they obviously don't know Dartmoor, or the mischief of the pixies. Night time is also a time for the pixies to help the farmers that they like. They will thresh the grain, but only if left a bowl of lovely creamy milk and a nice chunk of bread as a payment. Now, I shall tell you some older tales of pixie experiences, true tales that actually happened. In 1928, a local Dartmoor lady, a Mrs Herbert, told of her pixie sighting at the end of the 1800s. She described how she firmly believed in the good folk even as an adult. Her first tale was when she was only seven years old, at a place called Shore Bridge. There is a boulder close by, 
and it was here that she encountered a wizened old fellow around 18 inches tall. He wore a little pointed hat that curved towards the front, a small coat and knickerbockers. She could not remember completely, but had a thought that the clothes were red and blue. The pixie's skin was nut brown. As she stood watching amazed, the little fellow disappeared right before her eyes. She then told a second tale of how she was pixie-led while riding one day at a very familiar part of Dartmoor that she knew extremely well. Suddenly all seemed strange around her. She had indeed been mazed. For the life of her she just could not work out where she was or recognize even one single place. One thing she did remember though was how to break this spell to turn some of her clothing inside out. She began to turn her pockets and as she did so, everything around her began to look familiar again. She knew exactly where she was once more. The turning inside out of clothes worn is a common way to avoid the bewitching of the Fey folk. There is another tale told by the wonderful Dartmoor historian William Crossing, a man who documented and preserved so much of Dartmoor's history, social history and legends, a man whose whole life was dedicated to his deep love of Dartmoor and someone who knew it as well as the back of his own hand. Once, while riding across Scoriton Down, the swirling Dartmoor mists began to draw close around him. Crossing simply could not find the place that he needed to be for the next part of his ride. A green lane ran across the down, leading to a nearby hollow, where a small stream ran that led to Dean Burn, a strange body of water, and beyond this was a gate. He could not for the life of him find this gate on what is a direct route. Time and the evening was moving on, and he still had a long, long ride to Hexworthy Village, the end of his journey. He was worried about the welfare of his horse more than himself, and so decided to abandon his attempt to find the gate. He turned back and followed the green lane back to where he had joined the down, taking a much longer route to Hexworthy. I wonder what would have happened if he had only turned his pockets inside out, as Mrs Herbert had done. The pixies are everywhere on Dartmoor, and it's a truly strange place, one that draws visitors back time and time again and a place that holds the hearts of both myself and my husband. We'll return, but I hope we don't get pixie led. I hope you enjoyed this snippet of fairy folklore. I have many, many tales of beautiful and wild Dartmoor, and I will tell you more another time. But for now, dear friends, keep well, brightest of blessings, and remember, don't play with the fairy folk or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.